Greetings to pastors, theology students, and believers who are attending the Shin Shinji online seminar, Testimony on the Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. I'm Lee Jae Sung, the presider today. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who is attending the Shin Shinji online seminar. This seminar clearly testifies about the prophecies of the book of Revelation, as well as their fulfillment that all believers must know. As the words of this book of Revelation, which have now been unraveled, are so now clearly explained, many pastors in each country have signed the MOU with Shinchenji and wish to become one with Shinchenji to testify the words of Revelation. I am truly grateful. Today's seminar is also being broadcast simultaneously in various languages through YouTube so that everyone around the world can hear. I hope today will be a precious time for you to gain much grace and understanding. So, let us begin by praying with the same heart. Father God, who is holy and the one to whom we give thanks, I am truly grateful for the grace that allowed us to begin the Shin Shinji online seminar Testimony on the Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant today. For 2,000 years, this book of Revelation was sealed with seven seals in the right hand of God, so no one in heaven or on earth was able to open or see it. However, now is the precious proper time that Jesus has opened the seven seals by overcoming and fulfilling the prophecies. Then he showed them to the promised pastor and commanded him to testify to all the churches. So finally, the whole world can hear your will contained in the book of Revelation that we believe. Today, the words of Revelation chapter 17 are proclaimed through the Simon tribe leader who directly learned from the promised shepherd. Please pour out the Holy Spirit without limit on the tribe leader so that the word of testimony can awaken the spirit of each person. Also, please be with the pastors, seminarians, and all the thirsty saints and grant them eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind that understands, so that everyone can fully perceive the word. Please let this work take place. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who is alive. Amen. This seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. Now is the most important time to listen to the words of life. Today, Lee Sung Ju, the Simon tribe leader, will deliver the words of Revelation chapter 17. The Revelation chapter 17 records the mystery of the prostitute and the beast with seven heads and ten horns, who made all the nations drunk with the wine of adulteries. It also records in detail how the prostitute receives judgment. Everyone, do you know the actual reality of this prostitute and the beast with seven heads and ten horns? If we don't know this, we too can be deceived by the wine of adulteries of the prostitute and become those who belong to Satan. So, I hope everyone clearly understands the mystery of the prostitute and the beast with seven heads and ten horns through this time. Now, let us welcome Simon tribe leader Lee Sung Ju, who would testify the word today. Please give him a big round of applause. To the pastors and believers all over the world who have hope in heaven and eternal life, today for the Shinchanji Online Revelation Seminar, I'd like to welcome you and say thank you for attending. I am Yi Sung Ju, the Simon tribe leader, appointed in the name of Simon, the disciple of Jesus. Today, let's learn the words of Revelation chapter 17 together. Last time, I believe you must have learned well the words of Revelation chapter 16 from the Philip tribe leader. Today, we will learn the words of God's New Covenant, Revelation chapter 17's prophecies and their fulfillment. Let's learn together. 
The title of Revelation chapter 17 is The Food of the Devil, the Wine of Adulteries. Wine should just be wine, yet why does the scripture say the wine of adulteries? Also, who gives this devil's food the wine of adulteries and who is eating it? We will figure this out together. Concerning Revelation 17, we will first look at the key points. For the timing of the event, in Revelation 16, the seven golden bowls filled with God's wrath appear. Revelation 17 is the event that takes place after this wrath is poured out unto the betrayers and destroyers in Revelation 16. The location of the event is the desert, which is Babylon that captured the chosen people. Today, we will learn together even the mystery of Babylon. The contents of the event reveal in detail the secrets of the destroyers in Revelation chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 16. In the book of Revelation, there are three mysteries. The mystery of the betrayers, the mystery of the destroyers, and the mystery of the Savior. Revelation 17 is the event that tells everything about the mystery of the destroyers. The main context starts with saying, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. The judgment that the great prostitute receives is described at the end of the chapter. Before that, the mystery of the great prostitute and the mystery of the beast with seven heads and ten horns the prostitute rides is revealed in great detail. This is the mystery of the destroyers and the mystery of Babylon. The main contents are the event of the Passover at the second coming where God's chosen people who are in captivity by these destroyers are called out and brought out and the event of the judgment of the prostitute will receive inside the organization of the destroyers. Let's begin by reading from the main reference, verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 to 2. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Amen. Before we learn about the great prostitute, we must know that the spiritual woman in the book of Revelation is a pastor. Just like a woman receives seed from her husband, gives birth to, and raises children, a pastor receives spiritual seed of the word from Jesus the groom and evangelizes through the word of God and teaches congregation members through the word. Thus, a pastor is a spiritual woman. The prostitute, then, is a woman who acted immorally. Instead of having a relationship with the groom, Jesus, she had a relationship with the devil. A false pastor who receives the devil's spirit and the devil's lies and testifies to the lies is a prostitute. Then, why was she called the great prostitute? A false pastor belonging to the devil is a prostitute. And among the false pastors, he was the greatest false pastor. So that is why he was called the great prostitute. The actual reality of this great prostitute is the pastor of the Stewardship Education Center. A steward is another word for pastor. The Stewardship Education Center did not teach congregation members or theology students, but taught and trained pastors. The pastor of the Stewardship Education Center has a pseudonym, Mr. Dung. Since he was the pastor of the organization Raising Pastors, he is therefore the greatest pastor. Next, what are the many waters that the great prostitute is sitting on? In this chapter, verse 3, 
it says that the great prostitute sits on a beast with seven heads and ten horns. What does this mean? If we go to verse 15, it reads, The many waters where the great prostitute sits on are not physical water, but peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. So, numerous congregation members belonging to false pastors of the great prostitute, referred to as the beast, with seven heads and ten horns, and who are under the dominion of these false pastors, are the many waters. In verse 2, there are the kings of the earth who commit adultery along with the great prostitute, and the inhabitants of the earth become drunk with the wine of adulteries. First, who are the kings of the earth? A king is a ruler. Based on 1 Peter 2 verse 9, the spiritual king refers to a priest, a pastor. As they commit adultery along with the prostitute, pastors of each denomination belonging to the prostitute are the kings of the earth. The inhabitants of the earth are all congregation members belonging to these pastors who receive teachings from them, like being ruled by a king. Then, there is a big problem here. All congregation members receiving teachings from these pastors are drunk with the wine of adulteries. What on earth is this wine of adulteries? First, the wine in the Bible refers to the Word. It says in John 15, verse 1, that Jesus is the true vine, and thus Jesus' words become the true wine. However, in the Bible, there are two types of trees in Isaiah chapter 5. There is the choicest vine, but there is also a wild vine of the Gentiles. The wine from the wild vine of Gentiles is the wine of adulteries. Why? Because the words of Jesus and the teaching of the devil from adultery get mixed. Therefore, it becomes the wine of adulteries. For those who eat the teaching of the devil, their spirit will die. That is why it's also called the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that if one eats, then one will die. In Daniel chapter 4, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, who destroyed and killed God's chosen people, was compared to a large tree. The devil was with this tree. So this tree becomes a wild vine of the Gentiles. And because the devil is with it, and kills God's chosen people, it becomes a tree of good and evil. In Deuteronomy 32, it says this wine from the vine of the enemy is the venom of serpents and a deadly poison of cobras. The actual reality of the wine of adulteries is commentaries. In this way, today, looking at the words of Revelation 17 and 18, the pastor whom the devil was with Babylon, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, a spiritual king of Babylon, a false pastor, the great prostitute, appears. The prostitute of Babylon gives the wine of adulteries. This prostitute of Babylon, therefore, who gives the wine of adulteries, becomes the wild vine of Gentiles, whom the devil is with, and becomes the actuality of the tree of good and evil, of which one eats, and then one will die. The one who gives the wine of adulteries is the prostitute. And the wine of adulteries is lies, teachings of the devil received from the adultery with the devil, without seeing and hearing, saying it would be like this or that. Commentaries containing lies, which is addition and subtraction, are the reality of the wine of adulteries. Who are those drinking the wine of adulteries? Like it says in verse 15, P2, 
peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages refer to all congregation members of the world belonging to the prostitute. This word is also described in Revelation 18 that all nations have fallen because of the wine of adulteries. All nations mean all countries. A king rules a country, but a spiritual king, a pastor, governs a church. Then, all nations signify all churches. So it tells us that all churches drank the wine of adulteries from the prostitute, the devil's food, commentaries, and their spirits are dying and have died. Isn't that such a huge event? It says the believers who yearn for heaven and eternal life were not eating the food of God, but ate the devil's food, the wine of adulteries, commentaries, and their spirits have died. We have to seriously ponder on this verse and this event. And we must understand each verse and we must distinguish. The food we must eat then is not the devil's food, but God's food. God's food that we should eat at the time of the second coming is a hidden manna according to Revelation 2, verse 17. This hidden manna is promised by Jesus that he would give to the one who overcomes. This hidden manna, therefore, is God's food. How many years has it been hidden? That's right. It was hidden for 2,000 years in God's right hand, sealed with seven seals, which is the book of Revelation, is God's food. The book of Revelation is a new covenant established by Jesus' blood. Therefore, Jesus took the words of Revelation, sealed with seven seals, and opened all the seven seals in Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 8 and fulfilled the words of prophecies with physical entities. The word that reveals fulfilled realities is the revealed words of Jesus. Jesus' revealed words. The word of the prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, this is the hidden manna, and this becomes God's food. Who gives this food? Because Jesus has given it to the one who overcomes, we should eat the revealed word of Jesus as our food through the one who overcomes. Next, let us read from verses 3 to 6. Revelation chapter 17, verses 3 to 6. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. This title was written on her forehead, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Amen. First of all, the Holy Spirit took Apostle John to a desert. What kind of place is the desert? The desert refers to a place where the devil's temptation is. In time of the first coming, the Holy Spirit also led Jesus to a desert. And Jesus, too, received temptation there. Likewise today, when the reference chapter is fulfilled, the Holy Spirit leads new John into the desert. He received temptation as he was greatly astonished by looking at this prostitute. The beast he saw in the desert was a scarlet beast with seven heads and ten horns. Do you by chance remember this beast? Yes. This is the beast we saw when we were learning Revelation chapter 12. We saw this beast again in Revelation chapter 13. It was the beast that came up from the sea to the tabernacle of heaven. This beast came out of the sea into the tabernacle of heaven 
and fought against God's chosen people. And this beast conquered them. This beast represents the destroyers who devoured and destroyed the tabernacle of heaven and the chosen people there. Then what is the actual reality of this beast, the destroyers? The people who can testify to the actual reality of this beast group are those who fought and overcame this beast in Revelation chapter 12. The overcomer saw this beast, the destroyer, at the scene of the event and fought and overcame it. Therefore, these overcomers know who the seven heads are, what their appearance look like, what their names are, and what, destruction, what destructive actions these destructive beasts t did. We believe the one who fought and overcomes knows all these because he saw it in person. That is why in Revelation chapter 15, the place where those who had been victorious are located is called the Temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony because it can testify to the reality of the beast. What is the reality of this beast? The seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center and Mr. Serpent, who became one with these seven pastors, is one group of the beast. Next, a prostitute is right on the beast, and it says her name is Babylon. Why is the name of the prostitute Babylon? Babylon in the Bible is the kingdom of demons, the Gentiles. In each era, Babylon destroyed the kingdom of God, the tabernacle of God's chosen people. Babylon is a kingdom of demons that destroy the kingdom of God. Therefore, even at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, if you go and read the words of Revelation 18 and 17, you find that the dwelling place where the evil spirits and demons live is the woman, prostitute, and the beast with seven heads and ten horns, the destroyers. This is why the name of the prostitute is called Babylon. Because she is the dwelling place of the demons and the destroyer who destroyed God's chosen people. Therefore, that is why she's given the name Babylon. And given the name Babylon. However, here a problem arises. This group of the prostitute is Babylon, the dwelling place of demons, and it's called a mystery. A mystery means no one knows. Why is that the case? When the words of this prophecy are fulfilled, the reality of this Babylon is a stewardship education center. The Stewardship Education Center was an educational institute where pastors were taught. Therefore, the pastors who were taught by the Stewardship Education Center, pastors there, and the members of their churches who were taught by those pastors, did not know at all that this prostitute and this beast were the kingdom of demons and that it was Babylon. Everyone thought that these were God's pastors and God's kingdom whom God's Holy Spirit was with. Like at the first coming, Satan the devil and the evil spirits used the scribes and Pharisees and destroyed the entire Judaism. What this means, the scribes and Pharisees were spiritual Babylon. However, do you think the Jews knew that the scribes and Pharisees were a kingdom of demons and Babylon? No one knew that. That is why they became one with the scribes and Pharisees and persecuted Jesus. But at that time, there was only one person who knew. It was Jesus. Jesus revealed all the mysteries of the scribes and Pharisees to the world. In the same way, even today, the group of the prostitute is Babylon. 
a home of demons, but no one knew this mystery. However, today, there is someone who knows the mystery of Babylon about the prostitute. Who knows? If you just read the words of Revelation, will you understand everything? That's not the case. As shown in verse 3 of this chapter, the Holy Spirit who searches and masters all things, even the deep things of God, has shown and taught all these mysteries at the scene of the event. The one who has seen, heard, and realized the mysteries is the one who has seen the mystery of Babylon the prostitute. Who is the actual reality? It is New John. He is a representative Li Man He of Shinchanji Church of Jesus, Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. There are three mysteries in Revelation. Revelation 1, there's a mystery of rebellion, mystery of the seven stars and the seven golden lampstands. In Revelation 17, there's a mystery of destruction, mystery of the prostitute and the beast with seven heads and ten horns. In Revelation 10, there's a mystery of salvation, the mystery of the seventh and last trumpet. To whom were all these three mysteries in the book of Revelation revealed? Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and angels showed and taught all these secrets to New John directly at the scene of the events. New John, therefore, saw and heard these mysteries himself, and this is how he's able to understand all of these and testify to everything. Amos 3 verse 7 says that God does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. In this way, when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, the actual reality of all these secrets are shown to New John, that is, the representative Iman He of the Shinchani Church of Jesus, the temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony, and the New John testifies to the whole world the mysteries he has seen. That is why the representative Iman He is conducting worldwide seminars on Revelation right now, after having seen the prophecy and the fulfillment of the book of Revelation, and after hearing and seeing the mysteries of the book of Revelation. When you hear this testimony of the mysteries and prophecy and fulfillment, I hope that you will all become the people of heaven. Next, the scripture says that this great prostitute is the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. Why is that the case? First of all, the prostitutes of the earth are false pastors who receive the doctrine of the devil and teach lies by associating with the devil. The abominations are members of false pastors who belonged to the prostitute and they become abominations because they heard from false pastors lies which are detestable doctrine. Then, why is this great prostitute called a mother? It is because this person is a teacher who gave birth to, nurtured, and taught pastors and church members by receiving the seed of the devil, which is the devil's doctrines, through fellowshipping with the devil instead of the bridegroom Jesus. The mystery of this great prostitute is so huge. Very huge. Along with the secret of this great prostitute, the beast with seven heads and ten horns on which she is riding is also a mystery. The mystery of this destroyer was well told in verses 7 to 13. Let's read it. Revelation chapter 17, verses 7 to 13. Then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The beast, which you saw, once was, now is not, and will come up out of the abyss and go to his destruction. The inhabitants of the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast, because he once was, now is not, and yet will come. 
This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, but when he does come, he must remain for a little while. The beast who once was, and now is not, is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. Amen. First, let us talk about the secret of the seven heads. It says the seven heads are seven hills or mountains. If it were understood literally, how can the seven heads be seven hills and seven kings at the same time? We must know that it was written figuratively. First, the seven heads are the seven leaders who have been given authority by the devil, and they will become the leaders of the seven. The seven hills or mountains are the spiritual mountain of the church where people who were created from dust are gathered. Priests are called royal kings in the Bible, so a pastor therefore becomes a spiritual king. Then, the reason it says that the seven heads are seven hills and seven kings at the same time is because the seven heads or the seven leaders who receive authority from the devil are the seven pastors who lead the seven churches. Just because there are seven pastors gathering together does not make them the seven heads, the destroyers. They are called the seven heads because the seven pastors who lead their denomination and church are gathered together. The actual reality of these seven heads are the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center. Next, it says, out of the seven, five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. The meaning of these words is that five of the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center were enjoying power, but they were scattered and destroyed. Their names are only recorded with pseudonymous surnames. It says one is, and that one refers to Mr. Dang of the Stewardship Education Center, called the Great Prostitute. This Great Prostitute was the one who had continued to enjoy authority from the beginning. The other who has not yet come refers to one of the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center, and he's another pastor named Mr. Tang, who has the same surname as the prostitute Mr. Tang. He was someone to participate at the end, and he was able to have authority for a while, but then he left. Just because there are seven people gathered together doesn't make them the seven heads. Only the actual realities that have appeared and can be testified to according to the prophecy of Revelation become the seven heads of the destroyers, whom Revelation testifies to. Next, what kind of beast is the beast who once was and now is not? What does it mean that this beast is the eighth king? First of all, let me tell you about the reality of the beast who once was and now is not. He is Mr. Serpent, who is from the Tabernacle Temple and who became one with the Destroyer. This Mr. Serpent was enjoying his power as a Destroyer in the Tabernacle Temple, but had trouble with the evangelists in the Tabernacle Temple. So he went out to Jeju Island for a while. However, he contacted the representative pastor of the Tabernacle Temple in order to solve all these problems with the evangelists, and this allowed him to enjoy authority once again in the tabernacle temple. New John was at the scene of the events, and he saw and heard 
the actual reality of the fulfillment of this beast who once was and now is not. He saw things directly. He saw all these events himself. In this way, who can testify to the order of the appearance of the beast? It is only the one who saw this that can testify to all this process in detail. The reason why Mr. Serpent is called the Eighth King is because he becomes the pastor who takes over the seven destroyers and takes over the real power at the end. And that's why he's called the Eighth King. Next, there are ten horns. The horns are attached to the head and they symbolize power and authority. Isn't the horn of an animal also a symbol of strength when fighting? Figuratively, since the head is the leader or the pastor, the horns attached to the head become the ten authority figures who enjoy the authority. These are the ten authority figures who belong to Mr. Serpent, who is the eighth king. And its actual reality are the ten elders who received a position of an elder at that time. It says that these ten horns have not yet received a kingdom. A king in Revelation refers to a pastor. A king rules a country, and a pastor rules a church. To say that they have not yet received a kingdom means they don't have a church that they themselves are leading. To say it again, it means there is no church that they directly govern like how a head pastor would do. However, the ten authority figures who belong to the eighth king, Mr. Serpent, and of a position as an elder are the ten horns. These ten horns and the eighth king, they became one in order to achieve one purpose. The power and authority was given to the eighth king. The one purpose is hating and bringing her to ruin, leaving her naked and burning her with fire, as mentioned in verse 16 of this chapter. Let's read verses 14 to 18. Revelation chapter 17, verses 14 to 18. They will make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will overcome them because He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and with Him will be His called, chosen, and faithful followers. Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin and leave her naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to give the beast their power to rule until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Amen. There is the event of calling out and being chosen. This is the Passover at the second coming. Also, there's another event where the prostitute will be judged. First, it says with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers, and they will win. What kind of event is this? In the kingdom of the great prostitute and the beast with seven heads and ten horns, there are those who fight and overcome this beast and come out to the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. This is the event of Passover at the Lord's second coming. The kingdom of the beast was Babylon, the kingdom of the devil. The Passover at the second coming is calling and choosing people from Babylon, the kingdom of the beast, and bringing them to the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. It says that those who fight and overcome this beast are faithful people. I try to express this word with a picture. In the last days, when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, whom did Satan the devil use and work through? He worked through the prostitute and the beast with seven heads and ten horns. 
Therefore, this is the home of demons and Babylon, the kingdom of the devil. Because it is Babylon, they captured the tabernacle of God's chosen people and destroyed it. God's chosen people who were captured ate the devil's food, the wine of adulteries, which are the commentaries given by the prostitute, and then their spirits died from the commentaries. Revelation 18 says that not only the people of God's tabernacle who betrayed, but also all nations were destroyed by the wine of adulteries. This makes known to us that the spirit of all church members who long for heaven and eternal life are dead. From the doctrine of the devil, which is the commentaries, the one of adulteries. We have to marry Jesus, the bridegroom, but Revelation 18 testifies that church members married Satan, the devil. Everyone, isn't this really serious? Shouldn't we be thinking deeply about it? Who does the Bible testify I am? Whose food am I eating? And who am I marrying? Shouldn't you know this? At this time, the one who overcomes becomes one with the Lamb, Jesus, and fights and overcomes the group of the beast in Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation 16, he became a bowl of wrath and judged the beast. After the judgment in Revelation 17, he has received all these secrets to the world. He has revealed all these secrets to the world. The one who overcomes has become the shepherd promised by Jesus and has testified to all nations. The words of prophecy and fulfilled realities of revelation in the New Testament, which he saw and heard. When you hear the words of this testimony, let us never become arrogant. Rather, let us consider where and what we were eating and who we were married to. Let us realize all this through the word so we can certainly keep the Passover of the second coming, which is coming out of the temple, coming out to the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, the kingdom of God. This Passover was an event that occurred in every era. In Moses' time, God chose Moses to call and choose God's people from captivity in Egypt. At the first coming, through Jesus, God did the work of salvation by calling the Jews out of the world Judaism in which they were held captive by spiritual Babylon, who were the scribes and Pharisees whom the devil was with. That was Passover at the first coming. Likewise, at the second coming, in these words, the promise in Revelation, the Lamb Jesus uses the one who overcomes, New John, and calls and chooses people out of God who were captured by the Babylonians, the kingdom of the beast, and brings them out to the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony by testifying to the prophecies and the fulfillment of the book of Revelation in the New Testament. You must know the Passover event was promised for the time of the second coming and has been fulfilled just as it was promised. That is why hundreds of thousands of people have flocked to the Temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony after hearing the prophecies and fulfillment of the book of Revelation. Now, the words of the seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, are being spread all over the world. Numerous pastors have heard these words and signed MOUs. They are perceiving the words of Revelation, are teaching the members of their church that are led by these pastors. In the name of Jesus, I pray the pastor and the congregation members will receive all the blessings of eternal life and heaven in God's kingdom by realizing and keeping the word of the new covenant and by keeping the promise of the Passover at the time of the second coming, they'd be saved. Next, there was an event where the ten horns and the beast hate this prostitute and bring her to ruin and leave her naked. The ten horns are ten authority figures, the ten elders, and the beast is the eighth king, Mr. Serpent from the Tabernacle Temple. The ten horns are ten elders, 
They give all authority to the beast. And they hate the prostitute. At first they liked her. But after receiving judgment in Revelation 16, they hate her. They hated the prostitute. Exposing her shamefulness, shamefulness, how she committed adultery with the evil spirits together with the inhabitants of the earth is the event of leaving her naked. People have committed adultery with the evil spirits because of you, prostitute. This kind of fault and shamefulness is exposed. It also says they eat her flesh and burn her with fire. They took the doctrine of the prostitute as spiritual food and ate to its fullness. Until when? Until judged. However, after being judged, they turn against her and say that she was wrong. At first, they thought that the doctrine of the prostitute was God's food and ate it. But after being judged, the doctrine of the prostitute was revealed to be the food of the devil and the wine of adulteries. So they turned against her and said that the doctrine of the devil and the doctrine of the prostitutes are wrong. This very word that says how our doctrine was wrong becomes the fire of the word and judges the prostitute. In other words, this is an event of using and taking advantage of the prostitute, but then betraying her. At first, the prostitute ruled over the beast with seven heads and ten horns, but after receiving judgment, the beast with ten horns judges the prostitute. Let us summarize this message through the actual reality. After receiving judgment, there was a division between the great prostitute, Mr. Dung, and the eighth king, Mr. Serpent. The great prostitute was from the seven pastors belonging to the Stewardship Education Center who came up from the sea, and the eighth king, Mr. Serpent, who was a beast with ten horns, the ten elders. At this time, the Lamb Jesus uses New John, the one who overcomes, as a promised shepherd. So he can testify the words of this prophecy and fulfillment of revelation to the people of God who are taken captive. The people of God who hear the word of testimony and understand it are chosen and called to the temple of the tabernacle of testimony. This is the Passover event. Revelation 18 verse 4 also says, My people, you people of God, do not stay in Babylon, the kingdom of demons, but come out of it. According to the words of the prophecy of Revelation, the reality has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled. Let's keep the word of the new, co of the new covenant. In the kingdom of the beast, Mr. Serpent, the beast with ten horns, who became one with ten elders, hated the prostitute, Mr. Dung. You made people commit adulteries with the evil spirits, Mr. Dung. Your doctrines are the food of the evil spirit. Things went wrong because of you. With a heart of hatred, he said these words, which became fire to judge the prostitute, Mr. Dung. That is why he was called the eighth king, because he was the last one to have authority by taking over the kingdom of the prostitute. However, they are also completely judged and collapse in Revelation chapter 18. I hope that we'll be able to learn all the words of Revelation 18 very well next time. To summarize the words of Revelation chapter 17, which you have learned so far, the angel takes New John into the desert and shows him the mystery of the prostitute who sits on many waters and the mystery of the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Therefore, we must know that the one who saw and heard the mystery of the destroyer and the only one who can testify to the mystery of Babylon and the mystery of the destroyer is New John, the messenger of Jesus. New John. You must know this. And there is the event of the Passover when Jesus, together with New John, calls and brings God's people 
out of captivity from the beast. On the other hand, in the kingdom of the beast, the beast with ten horns judges the prostitute and takes over the kingdom of the prostitute and receives authority. These are the key events in Revelation chapter 17. Dear pastors from all over the world and all the saints, this is a really difficult time of the Great Tribulation. In a time like this, let us seek God more and more and enter into the Word of God. Let us become one in God and in this Word. And let us become one family. Let us love each other and forgive each other. During the 6,000 year history, many people believed in God, but didn't keep the promise of God. For us, however, let us be those who keep the new covenant by understanding the testimony of the prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, God's new covenant. By doing so, let us all receive the blessings of heaven and eternal life together. We are one in God. We are one. Let us briefly offer prayer. Father God, to whom we give all thanks upon thanks. Today, we give you thanks for guiding us so we can ponder and understand the words of Revelation 17, which was established by the great love and blood of Jesus on the atoning cross of Jesus. Father God, to whom we give all thanks, please give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand whenever we hear these precious words, so that we may keep the new covenant and receive all the blessings of the kingdom of heaven. Especially we pray for our precious pastors that Father God will grant them wisdom, understanding, and grace of heaven so that church members led by the pastors will understand the prophecies and fulfillment of this book of Revelation and all become the people of heaven who can keep the new covenant. Please help us so that all the remaining seminars will go well in the grace of the Lord. Please protect the health of everyone who is listening and protect their environment so that they can understand the word well till the end and be victorious. We give thanks for everything and pray in the name of Jesus, who is full of love. Amen. Thank you for listening to the end. About the reality of this spiritual Babylon. Now, the prostitute in Revelation 17 is judged. Through that incident, it is revealed to the whole world. This false pastor has made wealth through this teaching authority of Babylon and through Babylon's false luxuries. And those things are now exposed and judged and ended. And they too will also perish together. Yes. Now that we have heard the words of chapter 17, our expectations for Revelation chapter 18 are growing. As you can see in this video, this Thursday, Jay Sung Lee, the leader of the Thomas Tribe branch, is going to be testifying the words of Revelation 18. The time will be 10 a.m., the same as today. If you have any more questions or inquiries about Shinchenji Church and its doctrines, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will kindly answer your question. We will conclude this seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, with this, we will conclude the Shinchenji online seminar on the prophecy of God's new covenant and the testimony of its fulfillment. Thank you for listening.